Big Squeeze. Yo, what up, though? It's your boy, Big Squeeze, live and direct, here in the building, and I got the heavy hitters of Fox Entertainment right here with me. Listen, if you ain't familiar, get familiar, because Fox Entertainment is ran by some heavy hitters and veterans in our industry who represent Cleveland properly, all right? First and foremost, to kick this shit off, I got the homie Deuce. Deuce, what up, my guy? What up with it? Chillin', man, chillin'. Listen. A lot of people might be familiar with you because you've been on the scene doing it for a while. But if they're not familiar, then they need to get familiar. We're going we to help them out with that, all right? So, first off, me and you have been knowing each other for a while. I've been seeing how hungry you've been. I've been seeing the passion for a long time. The shit just don't stop. So, what I'm going to do is run down a little bit of your history. And then when we get to present day, we're going to talk about what you got going on right now, all right? For sure. All right, for sure. So, dude, your ass back in 2008, that's when you started Oxen King. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so, oh, wait, you go back there, you start Oxen Entertainment, and you got an artist named Skeeto. No, 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 Skeeto, Skeeto wasn't my artist. He was, me and him was both CEOs. We started Ox together. Oh, shit, okay, well, school me. School me on the history, yeah. Yeah, I had a, you know, I was, you know, I used to rap, and we used to, uh, we used to make music, me and, me and, me and the homies, you know, um, you know, because I'm from Kinsman, right, so me and a lot of my homies, we, we, we wasn't really taking it serious, but we was, but we was doing it because we knew, we knew we was dope, right, right but we right. was into some other shit, you know what I mean, but we was still making music, and, um, you know, you know, he got the same type of situation where he, they was making music, but they was, you know, he, he was into some other shit, but he still knew, was good at music, right? Right. And, you know, me and him, uh, you know, we, we knew each other for a long time, and we one day we just had a conversation and said, let's just put our shit together. So we, he, put, he, put, he put his his company he had, and I put my company I had, and we put it together, and, and and I came up with the name Ox Entertainment because I felt like me and him both, we two go hard ass niggas, right? Oh, don't call me. Uh, that's how I came up with the name, and uh, he agreed with the name. He was with it, and then we we I already had an artist named Nicotine that was on the shit that I was already currently doing. Right? Well, I was gonna do it today. I, that was that was the next thing I was gonna touch on because. Y'all made some big moves early in the game. Like, Nicotine, Nicotine, back in 2009, I think, he had a joint with, um, with Gucci. Come on, what up, though? Right. Now, you and, you only been doing this about a year in, and you got a collab with Gucci, man. How the hell did that happen? Well, as I said before, we two go hard-ass niggas. It just, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, when you got that type of character, sometimes it don't take as long as it take other people. You feel me? But, but at the same time, with that, uh, with that being said, um, it was a lot of being in the right situation, in the right time, in the right place. I mean, you, it's a lot of guys that go hard and still might take them a little minute to, to you know. That's the key to this game, though. You got to keep on pursuing and stay consistent and be persistent, no matter what. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, but anyway, um, the opportunity had had presented itself because you know we we already had a relationship with the people at the radio station, and um, I had previously been talking to Latin Assassin about nic about nicotine and about what we wanted to do with him. You know what I'm saying? And I had mentioned that we wanted to put somebody like. Gucci or Lil Wayne on, on, on this song that he already had called What Up Though. Mm. So one day uh, I was I was driving 
And Latin Assassin called me and he said she had Gucci them up at the uh, radio station right now. That's hard. That's hard. He said they on the radio tour. And um, so I said, well, all right. I'm like, all right, bet. And I called Skeeto. I said, shit, man, Latin Assassin just called me and told me Gucci. Gucci and them had to, uh, was up, up at the radio station with the tour bus. So Skeeto said, shit, go on here on up there. You know what I'm saying? So I went up there, and a tour bus was parked outside of the radio station. And I, I just walked up to the tour bus and knocked on the door. And uh, when I knocked on the door, Waka Flocka came to the door. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think at that time he was really big, or I don't know if his music was already out. But I know that, that nigga tall with all them dreads, that was Waka Flocka. You know what I mean? He came to yeah. the door. And I told him what I was trying to do. And uh, he told me, hold on a minute. So they closed the door. And then another dude come back out, a short dude, stocky dude with a long ponytail beard and shit. He like, what's up? I said, shit, we trying to put Gucci on our artist song while y'all here. We trying to get a verse. He was like, all right, 10 racks. I was like, shit, I ain't got that shit in my pocket right now. You got to let me go go get it and come back. Right. right. He was like, all right, bet. And so, I, when, I, when, I, when, I left the, when I left the tour bus, I called Skeeto. I said, hey, them niggas said 10. Skeeto was like, well, shit, I'm about to meet up with you. And, and, and um, me and him met up. We go back to the tour bus. Dude, get off the tour bus. Get off the tour bus. Gave him eight. They took the eight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, back then, um, back then, um, you know, the radio station was on St. Clair. So we had a studio at the time on St. Clair on 152nd. The radio station was on 30 something in St. Clair. So the niggas, you know, we told them uh, we, 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 they could follow us to the studio. And, um, uh, they followed us down St. Clair and parked the, parked the tour bus right in the hood, right, right in front of because the studio was in my, my homie G.I. basement. Oh, so Gucci oh, 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 got that damn tour bus right in St. Clair? 152nd. Parked that, bitch, parked that bitch right in the hood, you know what I'm saying? That's Big crazy. ass bitch, Gucci on the side of the tour bus and all that. They, oh, y'all y'all niggas was legends forever after that. I don't that know about that. <laughs> I'm talking about in the hood. In the hood, y'all was legends for that. Well, uh, I, I, I mean, I suppose it could have been legendary, um, but nevertheless, you know, shit, man. Uh, so G Boy, the dude with the long ponytail beard, he get out first, and he he wanted to come down and check because you know that was Gucci manager at the time, right? He wanted to come down and check everything out, and he wanted to listen to this track and shit before Gucci get out the get out the bus. Before anybody else got out the bus, G Boy came out, came downstairs and listened to it. He said, "Oh, this shit hard right here." He's like, "This shit hard." So he go back to the tour bus, and then all the niggas get out. Everybody that was on the bus damn near got out. Gucci get out with a towel over his head. <laughs> Down and shit, and uh, everybody introduced themselves and shit. He get right to it. We play the beat. He get right to it. He probably wrote his verse in like twenty minutes. Oh wow! And uh, oh, wow. I call, I call, I call a nigga team. I said, "Hey man, come to the studio." And Nick, Nick, like shit, come to the studio. I got a session. I'm like, "No, nah, you ain't got no session. Just come to the studio though." He like, "Shit, what's up?" I said, "Man, just come to the studio." So he came to the studio, and as he was coming down the steps, Gucci, Gucci in the booth doing his verse. And Nick looking at me like, what the fuck going on? <laughs> I said, nigga, that's Gucci in there. Nigga, we, we putting him on the song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so we, we got this fire in the in here blazing. A year later... 2010, you get the signing letters. You, you get the scooping up the deep again. How that come up? How that come up? I fuck with them niggas. Well, first thing is, uh, my my partner Skeeto, um, man, maybe like three weeks after we actually released What Up Though. Right. 
they just came and got Skeeto. Dang. And uh, long story short, he was sentenced to life in the federal penitentiary. Oh, shit. Uh, just for selling dope, though. There wasn't no other charges, nothing. It was just for drugs. Drugs. And, and, and they, you know, they sentenced the man to life, right? So, uh, now, now, now Ox Entertainment only got one, one boss. And instead of me and him, it was just me, right? Right, right. So I say, shit, I'm like, man, look. You know, me, I'm, I'm a thinker. You know? I say, I'm about to start throwing parties. Actually, that's how I make collab. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm about to start throwing parties and shit. You know what I mean? I said, I'm about to, I, I, need, I need capital coming in. Because, you know, when you first start that music shit, you ain't making no money off that shit. You spending money. You losing money. Yeah. You spending money. You got to believe in your product. It's investment. You got to know that shit going to come back. You know what I'm talking about? Right. So I said, as a business, we need to figure out some type of way to make revenue. Need to figure out some type of way to bring some income in. You know what I mean? So I started throwing parties because I know a lot of people. I say, shit, people going to come to my parties. I ain't tripping. And um, that's exactly what happened. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so even before the whole Giga Gang situation, I started throwing parties. Right. The first party I ever threw, I brought Big Tuck. Oh, yeah. I remember him. Not a strange name. Hey, get money because we going to get money. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first party I ever threw, and that's where I met Collab at. I don't know if he was at, I, I think he was at that party, yeah, because he was part of the club that I used to throw that concert. Gotcha, gotcha. But when I tell you, my G, hey, that bitch was so packed. Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, we, hey, hey, we had Ray Jr. in there. He performed. No, that wasn't, no, that was this is, no, I'm tripping. It, this was just Big Tuck. This was just Big Tuck. And um, I had been talking to the Geeker gang at that time because they was actually at that part at that concert too. And um, you know, I used to see Geeker gang on the on the internet, and I used to be like, man, these guys, man, they they, they go so hard, you know. And, and to me, that's all I want in an artist is yeah, somebody that's gonna be consistent and gonna play around. You know what I'm saying? Ain't gonna ain't gonna ain't gonna anchor the ship down. You feel me? Gonna go hard. For this shit, you know what I mean, and, and, and the way they used to promote on the internet, I said, oh yeah, these boys are, they gonna go hard, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I, I felt like they had a they, they they had a void, you know, they needed somebody to come in and, and put them in the put them in the room and introduce them to people in the room, you feel me? So and at that time I was in the room, I knew people, and as, as hard as y'all going, y'all got the city lit. That's when the fuck like, you basically had to shut the shit down. Yeah. So like, what what the hell was that like I mean, when you had in 2012 and you had to you know grab your daughter, you had to get you know custody of your daughter. Man, that's a, that was a uh, you know that was a life defining moment right there, man. Uh, I mean, it it shows that you were you know a real a real one. It's a loose to you, but. Was it hard to? I mean, I know it's, it's, it's no decision when it comes to your daughter over the, you know, partying. But like, you in the middle of really taking off. Was that a struggle? Um, nah, nah, it wasn't no struggle. It was an easy decision, man. I prayed on it. Yeah. Uh, hey, that uh, that's my kid. You know what I mean? Uh, oh. uh, you definitely got it first. I get that. So. It's like this, man. Like, uh, I, I love music and entertainment. It makes me happy, man. It, it's a passion of mine. And, and plus, I, I, I got a lot of shit to say. You feel me? And uh, it's therapeutic, too. Mm. But it ain't more important than my children. Never. I, it ain't. I, 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 and, 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 so, and, so, and so the thing is... Uh, you know, I ain't going to get into my personal issues because I'll be putting my daughter's personal issues out here. But just put it like this. All the situation and events that took place made me only want to focus on her. Right. Yeah. 
I hate to focus on her, bro. She definitely, she definitely lucky to have you in her cool. You know what I mean? Let's go. So look, you you away from the scene and you chilling, and then like I hear some rumblings about you writing a movie and shit. What's that about? Yeah, um, you know I have been through a lot of shit in life, man. Uh, and then you know I like I grew up on Kinsman. You feel me? Yeah. And I've been through a lot of shit, and a lot of my homies have been through a lot of shit. And, uh, like I said, the entertainment, not just rapping or making music, it's all expression, it's therapeutic. When I wrote that movie, it was therapeutic. You feel me? And really, the movie was based on uh, a lot of the shit that I've been through, a lot of the shit that my homies been through. And we just took that, I just, I just took that and put it into one character. You know what I'm talking about? When is that? Uh, when that? When, when is that movie coming to the to the streets? Yeah, we can see that. Well, you know, uh, coronavirus has really uh, gotten the way of a lot of shit when it comes to movie production and, and such and so forth. But it's coming. It's definitely coming. The script is already all the way done. You know what I'm saying? And um, we got to get to a comfortable space where we can film it and keep everybody safe. You know what I'm saying? Um, cause the, you know, production right now in, in a lot of movies, they getting tested every day, you know what I mean, yeah. shit like that, so, um, you know, around 2019, my daughter was turning 18, and, um, I, you know, that's when I, well, that's when I knew I was gonna get back into the mute, to the entertainment, right? But then... Early 2020, here come coronavirus. Oh, so you wrote the movie in 2019? No, I wrote. I started writing the movie in like 2015. Okay. I just took my time with it. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. you. You know All what I'm right. saying? In 2019, I went ahead and finished it. You know what I'm saying? It was probably 80 percent done. Got gotcha. you. But when I knew I was getting back into the entertainment, I finished it. So, so, so here we go. Twenty twenty one. You you done signed G Mula. You done signed Manny Monroe. You done signed no. Is it Manny Monroe? I said it wrong. Okay. okay. I said it right, Manny. Yeah, Manny Monroe. Right, I want to make sure I get your shit right. I apologize. My man, you, you signed Tay Benji. You linked up with Collab, 2021 looking fucking bright. Tell me what's going on in present day, my man. Well, you know, me and Collab, uh, we, shit, he was already, that's, like I said, that's my brother, man. I met him when I started throwing the parties. So we, we ain't really link up. Shit, we was already tight. Right. right. Anyway, right. Right. you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, I don't really want to do this shit with nobody else. I don't really so trust can, nobody. I don't really trust so, nobody else. You know what I'm saying? So come on, talk to me. Talk to me about when you decided, yo, I, this, this the one, this, this the dude that linked up with to make this shit happen. Cause, Cause you was away from the scene for a minute too, Collab. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really feel like I don't need to introduce you, cause niggas know who the fuck you are. But in case they don't, this the fucking legendary producer, Collab on the track. Appreciate that, Squeeze. Hey, no, for real. You know, like like Deuce said, you know, we already we met each other, you know, prior to this, probably about 10 to 15 years ago. And um, we never really lost touch. So it was always, you know, rumbling. You know, he went away. I had to go away dealing with some personal things and just get my mind right. And it was always rumblings and conversations between me and him. Uh, well, what if I come back? Won't you manage me? Or, you know, it was always something. I'm right. trying to pull it. I'm trying to tug at him like, man, come on, you know. Because I was itching to make a return. And, you know, people with, people itching for it too, you know. But um, it was one day he decided, like, man, I'm I'm ready to do this music. And I'm like, say less. <laughs> like let's go, you know. Like when you ready, let's get it together. You know, I made some upgrades to to the studio and and different things like that, and prepare in preparation for success. So 
it was a story already that was wrote. It just in the uh, the final touches now. So that's it was a, it was an easy choice, man. 3MG was already a dope ass studio, so you upgrade yeah. that shit is crazy. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I was blessed to do a lot of that, man. What made you? What made the time feel right, though? What was it in particular that made you know this be the right time? I don't know, man. I mean, like, sometimes you get an itch and you feel like, you know, sometimes you don't feel 100% sometimes. And sometimes you do feel 100%. Also, too, it's just like, it's just like an important event. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it's time to turn up, you had that feeling. You know what I'm saying? Time. Like, but when he came to me, I know Deuce as an ox. You know, that's the way I look at him. He a bull. He gonna get what he want. He gonna get what he want. And you need somebody like that on your team. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, one thing I learned, you know, about about running 3MG, the whole label aspect, I learned a lot from that, you know. But one thing I learned is that you got to have a bull on your team. Or you will be running in the same spot. And Duke is the bull. I'm telling everybody, I tell people that. He like, look, people know what I do on this beat shit. Like, I am him, you know what I'm saying? But... I can't be him without the bull because the bull going to get you through situations that this person may not make, you know, may, they don't know how to talk their game or talk like this or dudes know how to do all that. So, you know, props out to him for being a bull, but every team need a bull, man. That's hard. Manny Monroe. What's up? What's up? So check this. You, you appear to be the only lady on the team. I feel working with these these men who come come ready to work, put in that work. If they letting you ride with them, you must be working hard too. Yeah, it's actually it feels good. It feels nice. They got a lot of talent, so it's a lot of things I can take from you know that area too. And yeah, that is what I got to bring to the table. You not you not from Cleveland, so. No. What was it like for you making up with these Cleveland guys? Was there, was there ever like any style of or you know what, what is it like working with somebody from a whole different region? It's actually I don't it's beneficial and like getting to know more things, you know more background of what they got going on on their music side over there because yeah. you know us on the east coast and on the west side. So tell the people where you from and where, where hip hop like over there where you at? I'm uh, from Far Rockaway, uh, Queens, New York. So yeah. It's, oh yeah. So we we know the East Coast scene here for. Huh? I said we know the East Coast scene here for. Did you did you feel some type of way you know rocking with the Midwest guys? No, nah, not at all. You know, music is. And I, I appreciate that because I know, like I said, we got a different style of hip hop, but it ain't nothing that can't be blended together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Give it up. Where, where my man G Moolah at? Yeah. Me and you. What up, Doug? What up, what up, what up? How you feel, good brother? What'd you say it was breaking up? I said, how you feel? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm chilling, bro. How everybody doing? Come on. Well, we good, we good. So let me ask you this. You, you too, being an out-of-town guy, you from Milwaukee, right? Yeah, I'm from Milwaukee, but I moved to Jersey, so I'm like, I'm like, hey. So y'all, y'all too, and y'all, I see how y'all pinpointing and dropping, dropping people different regions, and they all doing in the same thing. We see challenges, Mola. Not challenges, but like, what was it like working with you, you know, with me at West Media? Oh, it ain't saying nothing to me. Like, you know, like I said, I'm originally from the Midwest, so it was, it was just, you know what I'm saying? Like, working with family. All oh, my family is here. Yeah. You got the Midwest already in. That's a good look. Hey, Benjamin. What up, what up, What's good with it? Cool, cool. Now, if you ain't familiar, get familiar. Take Benji, um, one of the newest signings to um 
Ox Entertainment. We out here getting it popping. Now, you, not only are you originally from Cleveland, you decided to, to branch off a little further also. Y'all are doing like a fucking United States shutdown. I see what y'all are trying to do here. I see you niggas. Y'all not fooling me. Hey, Benjamin, you from Cleveland, but you, you shut it down where? Yeah, so originally I'm from uh, I'm from up by Cleveland, you know what I'm saying? Ready for the area. But I just down to Miami um, beginning of this month. I just came down here and, you know, trying to expand and network, really. So, for the music. So, you're in Miami. Are you still... Are you still, you still got that same Cleveland hustle when you in here? Come on, man. You know, that, that don't never be. Yeah, man. It's, it's nice women. It's, it's, it's them fancy-ass trees and them sports cars. You like man, I feel like the whole reason why you moved down here, man, is because I feel like I, I just feel that I belong, if that makes sense. You know, like, always stand out no matter what, no matter what location, but... You know, the, the flashy lifestyle, the fast cars, the good looking females, you know, and it's it's a hustle vibe down here. Like everybody down here you can feel the sense that it's it's ambition, you know, so I feel like I came down and I fit right into the picture perfect. I feel it's, it's like a hustle vibe down here, so I came down and I feel like I just fit right into the picture perfectly, you know? Right. Uh, didn't even miss a beat, so. Are the, are the opportunities any different in Miami than they are in Cleveland? Yeah, definitely so, just because um, it's a bigger city, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Miami is notoriously known for uh, people coming in from different places, coming into networking, you know, coming in to, to do things different, so. Every time I step outside, it's another opportunity, you know. Um, I really do something different, makes me change, you know, grow. Y'all about to have niggas eating Polish boys all across the goddamn United States, y'all. Yeah, we, we got I like that. Okay, so, Tay Benjamin, um, you have a project dropping, am I correct? Or is it already out? The project dropped on August 10th. It's called Something Like Therapy. Um... S U M N. That's the way something is spelled. But yeah, it's a it's, it's an eight track album, you know. Um, but each track on there has a lot of substance to it, you know. And it's like, I just I really encourage anybody to go listen, man. Like for real, if you're looking for whatever you look, you know, Ox, Ox Entertainment, we bring so many different vibes. So really, like, you got to get hit. If you ain't hit, you have to. No, that's that's a good look. I appreciate. The fact that y'all representing Cleveland the way y'all are, y'all all linking up, becoming one movement and going hard. I think right. the city need more of that, man. I really do. I love that shit. They and the do. fact that these two guys who y'all got in charge, these two niggas, these two niggas know what they're doing. So it's like, I really feel like y'all in good hands. This is a great look. So, so September 11th, right? Shit is about to get crazy. What's dropping on the left? We got a song called uh, Jealousy. And it Jealousy. Got, got all of us on it, you know. And um, like, like, like Benji just said, you know, we got a lot of different uh, 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 flavors, like different, you know, but everybody sound good together, right? Mm -hmm. You hear that song, man. The song's so hard. It don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, hard. We putting it out on the, on nine eleven, you know that's a dangerous day. Nine eleven, <laughs> remember that? Uh, I remember. That's a dangerous day, so I feel like we we dangerous too. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Let's drop this shit on nine eleven. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, you know, hopefully people gravitate to it, man. We can the video done, uh, video and song will be out, and we just gonna keep keep coming from there. One thing I want to say about uh, you know, Midwest shit though, like I I, I love my my city and I'm definitely a Midwest nigga, right? But I feel like it need to be more uh, coming together. Hell yeah! There's too much individualism in the Midwest, and don't get me wrong, I love my niggas, I love my city.
But that's what I see through my sight. Too much individualism, man. Everybody, yeah. everybody want to shit on each other, show that they better than each other, and uh, it's more of that mentality than the come together mentality. You know what I'm talking about? When you go, when you go down south, though, them niggas, them niggas be, them niggas be together. They help each other. They, they come together to do shit. Even, hey, even yeah. if them, some of them niggas don't even, ain't even too fine to each other and still work with each other though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 for sure. That's why all the music you see coming out, it's niggas from the South. Because they helping each other. They working with each other. They, you know what I mean, coming together for their shit. You know what I mean? And niggas wonder why, how come you can't see this or that from Cleveland or the Midwest? It's the mentality, man. We got to get over that shit, man. Niggas got to start coming together more. You know? I most definitely appreciate y'all. Working together and leading by example, showing the people, you know, what needs to be done to elevate and take shit up in me. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. 100% I appreciate that. So listen, world, if you ain't familiar, you need to get familiar. Jealousy dropping. September 11th, it's a fucking emergency and shit don't get dangerous. Ox Entertainment, G Moolah, Manny Monroe, my nigga Tay Benji, uh, collab on the track, Deuce. Support the movement because it's moving. If you hear anything or see anything that pertains to Ox Entertainment, you need to do yourself a favor and click on the goddamn button because it's fire. You can't have collab on the track and the shit don't be fire. That's real. Y'all niggas know that. I'm not even, I don't even have to gas that up. That's a fact. That's a hundred percent fact. So support the movement because it's moving. And do y'all guys have like a social media though? Anywhere that any anywhere that they they need to follow you to stay updated. Uh, my shit is Deuce Ellis D U C E. I spell it D U C E from the word produce. I don't spell it the traditional way people spell Deuce. I spell it D U C E from the word produce because I make shit happen. You know, so it's, hard. it's D U C E underscore E L L I S. There you go. Y'all get me. Thing is, uh, at collab on the track on duck C O L L A B O N D A T R A C K. All social media is collab on the track. Right up. You can follow my Instagram. It's uh, Tay Benjamin with two N's at the end. T A Y E, and then Benjamin with two N's at the end, and that's what I'm on. So. Yeah, I can follow my Instagram at Monty Monroe. That's M A N I E um, hyphen. There's a little underscore M A N M O N R O E. So M A N I E M O N R O E. Y'all can follow uh, follow my Instagram Mula underscore thirteen Mula M U L A underscore D number thirteen. Hey man, real shit. Support the movement because it's moving, man. These guys are on the rise, and y'all need to be there from the fucking beginning so y'all can see how they move. So, hey, I appreciate y'all coming on and rocking with me, and I really believe that Ox Entertainment is on the way. Good luck, y'all be safe, 100. Yeah.